Welcome to Marvel Maniac, an MCU after show. This is your host, Eric Cicada, a.k.a. Mr. Honest. Glad to be back with you this week for an awesome, seriously memorable Agatha All Along episode. The show keeps topping itself, and I don't know if it's going to keep doing that. It's, I think it's, if, it, if this show sticks to landing next week, we have one of the greatest Marvel TV shows of our time. Okay, I might be overdoing it a little bit, but I'm really into the show right now. I love the theme. I love that it's Halloween time. And you know, I'm a bit too old for trick-or-treating. I'm 33. So watching like a really great Halloween Marvel series is kind of like a gift. I don't know if you feel the same way. I have a listener feedback in the description of this episode. All you got to do is click it, put your email, and leave any message you want. Nice ones. Uh, obviously would be much more appreciated give me your feedback on this episode this is such a crazy episode kind of like inception in a way um so i'm going to touch on it in the best way i can i'm going to kind of go over it and we're going to uh, unpack some of the bigger moments and reveals i'm not going to go into every tarot card picked up we have lilia for that um so let's get into the episode so the opening of this episode we get this kind of beautiful slow motion shot of lilia falling backward into complete darkness this sets up the entire episode and it's her final journey and ultimately this is lilia's episode and definitely lilia's trial so thankfully teen didn't take her out <laughs> like the mud didn't kill her um because they really did need her here like not in a certain context but in a certain context like this episode is pretty like beautiful in a way like it's a mix of tragedy and beauty and culmination and subtle culmination. Like by last week, we're like asking why in the world does Lilia keep having these moments? Um, when earlier in the show, you could, uh, I mean, not to be mean, but you could write them off as like senile moments or just, she's a kooky cook, you know, she, she, she's just losing it. But in this episode, we get to see, all of those little flashes that she had is part of her journey and how she's experiencing time jumping from her very earliest days becoming a witch with her mentor to the very uh, road that leads to her final trial. She sees her story and it all connects. And something, um, I mean, we're going to jump to the end of the episode right now because we've all seen it. This is my hardest thing sometimes i'm like i gotta wait to get to that part of the story because um we're not there yet but we all just watched it so the episode actually ends with lilia being a kid again and with her mentor and um she's like are you ready to begin and she says yes something tells me lilia is just actually gonna live out her whole life at this moment um maybe in like the last few seconds of her life she's able to experience her whole life that she missed via flashbacks flash forwards she gets to connect the dots in this episode and that hits all the right buttons for me and it helps give closure immediately with lilia and uh yeah well she she sacrificed this is the first like real sacrifice i'd say alice did sacrifice but it was an unknowing one, so it was like just evil on Agatha's part. But Lilia, her trial, the end of it, she knew the Salem Seven were coming, and she stayed behind because she knew what she was going to have to do. I was really curious about what would the interactions with Billy and Agatha kind of be like going forward, especially since where we left them last week, they were on their own. And Agatha seeming slightly intimidated by billy but a part of me also thinks she has a kind of care for him kind of like your walter white to jesse pinkman type deal in her eyes at least if we're going to go to another show she has a respect for him and she cares for him and that's just it, it's very noted this far into the series when next week we're seeing the last two episodes um Wow, what a great show. You know, Billy also begins questioning Agatha's motives, and he even says at one point, I'm starting to wonder if, you, if you've ever even been down the road. And Agatha is so full of lies. I like having a main character with this many secrets and hundreds of years behind them. I mean, Thor is hundreds of years old. I'm sure there's some fun, adventurous tales of Thor in Asgard or a younger Thor. Um but this is just a little bit different because it's a little more grounded in a whole different element. Um, 
which I don't know how far away is the magic of the witches to the Asgardian gods. Or you can summon lightning or you can summon CGI colorful superpowers, which have always been okay by me. Even, you know, two episodes since its reveal, we're still resonating and as an audience and the characters in the show, like Lilia and Jen, um, and even Agatha are still coping with that new piece of intel. Uh, Agatha's probably very afraid of Wanda. And the fact that she hints again in this, uh, like, is you, he, Billy asks um, Agatha, Billy asks Agatha, is Wanda Maximoff really dead? And she says, no, yes, maybe so, pretty much. And I love that, but I hate that. But that tells me that she's not dead. I don't know. They wouldn't tease it so much. Dare I ask for a dare I ask for a cameo at the, in the last episode or post credit scene? Dare I? I I mean, it would make the show. Sh- it's and you're like thinking, well, she's a movie hero. She's not. Oh no, Wandavision. Oh yeah, this is the sequel to Wandavision. I think Elizabeth Olsen likes the role enough, and if she got to hear, hear the story, and where there's other rumors right now, we'll talk about another episode of like where the story of the Scarlet Witch can go from here if she is alive. Um, when Agatha again refers to his mom as Wanda Maximoff, he says, she's not my mom, I have a mom. So, Billy slash William now is having a literal identity crisis. Because he, he well, technically he does have amnesia. He doesn't remember anything of the life of the uh, William who, who, whose body he's taken over. And over three years since WandaVision, he's tried to live as normally as possible. And he, he even cares. He could read thoughts. So he, his parents, surrogate parents, which are actually his real parents, he wants to pretty much make them happy again. And he does that. And and that kind of just goes to show with like the kind of person he is already becoming. He's a good guy, got good intentions. He knows he just feels something is going on with with Wanda Maximoff and his mom. And he knows he knows about Tommy. He he believes it deep inside from the beginning, but there's that revelation in the last episode where um, I didn't realize it, but he said it right in front of Agatha. So it was probably a moment back in episode two where um, the sigil came over his face. And yes, in this episode, Lilia does reveal that he she put the sigil on William that day. Uh, she saw the path ahead of him, of him, and she did. It. She said she was gonna. She said she knew, knew that he was gonna need a few years to kind of comprehend, understand. And reflect, and that's kind of amazing that a character, as some people will call small side off screen character, literally cannot in canon stop could have stopped the events of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, but having a care for this boy who's going to be going on this incredible journey, um, she probably did it for the best. Maybe it would have been terrible if Wanda uh, found her kids that early so she's protecting billy the real question is where is that little speedster tommy um is he did he possess a body or is his spirit out there and can it be summoned by the end of the road um i do believe we'll get that answer and i think we will find tommy it's just unlikely that there was another scenario where he found a body or even a teen's body so i mean he could be in like an old person's body which would be kind of funny so everyone in this episode knows that he is the son of the Scarlet Witch. Um, I don't know why, but it seems like he's been given a lot more respect because of that. I think many people know, I mean, witches know the lore of the Scarlet Witch. And it's hard to know or understand if there has even ever been a previous one. Um, since there's all this old ancient history on her. Um, was the first iteration like thousands of years ago? Years ago, a different incarnation of Wanda. I mean, it's crazy. This, this show's begging me to ask these questions. I'm telling. It makes my my mind go everywhere. And the fact that the Salem Seven returned is creepy. And we see what happens at the end of the episode. She flips the room around, and the whole Salem Seven, what it looks like. Okay, I'm not. I can't. I can't tell you if these are like freaking Dementors or um, the Ring Wraiths. I've been saying that from the beginning. I don't know if like they're able to survive 
being pierced by a sword going through their whole body. Um, I'm pretty sure she killed all of them, and she made a sacrifice to aid uh, the coven to get to the end of the road so she can have her full circle story. Just because she's walking around with mischievous liars like Agatha doesn't mean Lilia is going to succumb to the true hero's journey, which she has been summoned for in this episode. Me trying to explain to you like how they put the story together in this episode is like Jenga of the mind. So I'm going to like go through significant moments as I think of them. And we all know Lilia is like seeing these moments out of order very, very confusingly up until everything starts to make sense in this episode. But still hard for me to explain like don't help back. She she has these moments in two different episodes. Um, Alice, don't save or don't. And then she's like, don't what? Don't what? And then like it cuts to her in a like, don't save Agatha is what she wanted to say. And, and she says, save Agatha on the other end of that. Sorry. See, I'm all over the place, just like Lilia in this episode. One of the major reveals heavily theorized on channels like Screen Crush, my probably favorite honestly my favorite place to go watch videos about marvel that's not to say i don't also love new rock stars i think they got a lot going on too i only have so much time in like some of these videos that i watch like i i that's a lie i have a little bit of time i could watch all the videos um but i just there's something about ryan airy i connect with the guy i like him i think he's really fun and i like his uh perspective um on the mcu it, it lights up my it lights up my creative side it makes me want to talk about it too so i try not i try very hard not to like take from their theories and whatnot but i think some of them probably are embedded and baked into my brain because i've been watching screen crush close to four years and uh yeah a little shout out to them but you know as as i was saying is you know channels like screen crush They've reported that Rio is most likely Lady Death. So we've kind of known, I've kind of known this, all all signs led to that anyway. Like there was, there's little signs throughout um, and it's, it's hinted at. So, but to get it re revealed officially is cool. And the way they do it is scary <laughs> because she appears briefly emerging from the darkness with a haunting face, part human, part skull, like, actual death i have to do this here since we're talking about rio's this is where we at the rio section before we move on to the like ending and what like some of the beef of the episode a little bit more of the beef um i want to just talk about rio as lady death um there's i'm not a comic reader but you know what you know what i am is a thanos fan not not the genocide but the passion rio Represents Lady Death. In the original Infinity War story, I know for sure that Thanos is obsessed with death. So my little fan fiction going on right now is that Thanos will somehow be revived. It'll be the same, like, wisdomy Thanos that did take away half the population and think he died thinking he did it. I'd like to see him reborn. I'd like to see a story with him and Rio Lady Death where he becomes obsessed with death and the failure and the fact that his plan didn't work when he comes back. Um, it sounds like they're setting up a really big opportunity for a cool uh, new Thanos movie or short series. I don't think they want to do that, but they could. Um, I feel like the Lady Death thing is just so tempting, and Aubrey Plaza is a hit in this show as Lady Death. I, every time she's on screen, I'm having a good time because her relationship with Agatha is so mysterious, and it gets a little more mysterious now, noting officially that she's with Lady Death. And Agatha's, in quote, um, I like the bad boys, what can I say? Some, something along the lines of that. <laughs> Only time will tell uh, how much more of Aubrey Plaza's Rio we will get. Is her name actually even Rio, or do we just call her Death from now on? I think the human side of her, which we've seen, the side of her who loves Agatha, who cares, I think that is Rio. But Lady Death is her job, and who she technically just is. Um, so it's complicated, is probably the relationship status they would have on Facebook, which nobody cares about anymore. And Facebook is slowly turning into MySpace. And the new Instagram app is totally turning into the new Facebook. 
Okay, so that was my little nerdy Thanos Thanos moment. We're going to get plenty of those on our 100th episode special covering Infinity War. Um, that episode will be over two hours long if I deem it. Dang, dang it, because that is my favorite movie of all time. Um, I'm excited to have you there. Uh, give me your feedback on Rio as Lady Death. What did you think? What do you think about the Thanos theory I had? Is there even room for that in the future MCU? Um, in our feedback section in the description of this episode, a simple click away will uh, bring you to a page where you enter your email and then you just give us your opinion, your thoughts, your theories. Uh, and I would love to credit you on the show with them. If you don't want your uh, name on them, just say it. You know, it's no big deal. We appreciate any and all feedback. We is in me. There's nobody else doing this. All right, I have a team of about 50 people working for me, um, WandaVision style. Like, I've made my own hex, and um, I have employees now. My parents are my employees as well. Um, I, I'm lying to you. And we move on. Okay, Lilia, let's get back to the story. Lilia's perspective and flashbacks um, made her seem crazy throughout the show. And most of the moments, to be honest, like, as they were happening... They, I don't know if they were trying to be played off as funny, but they just were. So we'd laugh. I would laugh off most of Lilia's craziness as like a character trait, not really trusting that she's seeing visions of the past and the future. And she's just on this uncontrolled roller coaster of time. And um, that's very compelling too. It's, it it bring in the episode, it gives like, it gives end of series vibes. Like it's it's like it, we're reeling it in and getting to learn all the truths of the show. This is the one one of the crux episodes of the show. I'd say maybe this could it might be the very best episode of the show. Um I heard a theory. Um skip ahead a minute if you don't want it. I don't know even know if I brought this up last week, but um the theory might have been from Screen Crush, it might have been from the internet. I'm sorry, I don't know exactly where. But it was that uh at the end of the road Agatha to redeem herself. Uh, the thing she will ask to get back is not her powers, but the witches of her coven in which she lost along the way. And that may even include Billy Maximoff. If we see him die in the next episode, I surely will. <laughs> I will surely think that's what's going to happen next week too, by the way, a little bit of a reminder. It's two episodes for our season finale. My plan as of right now, since this show is so big and we're, I am so invested, I know a lot of you are so invested, I still think I'm going to cut these up one episode at a time and both release them on at night, you know, one by one. Um, sticking to the 11 schedule, I'll try for the first one, but for the second episode, the finale, it may go, it may take a little later to get to 11 o'clock. But next week, we're going to uh, cover both of those episodes separately, unless I get like a feedback uh, from one of you guys saying, like, no, you should do it into one episode. And then I'll just listen to you. Please leave us feedback. <laughs> um, nah, it's, it's not that I need your feedback. It's that I'm excited to hear other fans' perspectives. Uh, I like shifting my perspective. Similarly, how we see this episode from Lilia's perspective. Um, like I said, her flashbacks were weird in the moment, but all come together in this episode. Uh, she mentions that time is an illusion. The more special thing about some of these flashbacks and flash forwards that she was having was it all led to this tarot card reading in which the trial is terrifying at the scary castle. And it's like the scariest trial we've had yet. Um, except for the costumes, like how have I not talked about that yet? I love Agatha as the green, Witch. um, I, I think Billy is Maleficent is fun and fair. And I like that a lot. I just, you know what? MCU ain't afraid to, to do that. Like it's, it's a guy is a girl villain and I'm okay with that too. I, I, I think it's a positive thing. Um, but we learn at least I do. I, I learn a new kind of a newfound respect for Lily in this episode, especially after seeing she's the one who put the sigil on teen and saved his life. Probably. I just don't think that character teen at that moment when he became a maxim, when the Maximoff became William, the moment where he took over the body, I think his mom was unhinged enough studying that dark hold that, if he got him back, imagine 
what she be doing? She had nothing. Would she be looking at the dark hole? Would she care about the magic, or would she just want to be sitting with her family? I think she'd be compelled to go into that dark hole once she gets the kids back. So something about Lilia is kind of like that. I don't mean to compare her to this at all. It's it's an honor. It's a significance that I'm about to do. She's kind of like the the mouse in Avengers Endgame, the rat that accidentally sends Scott out of the van and. Um, changes the course of what most likely is the history uh, already, you know, five years later. How do they undo that? Well, Scott Lang, Ant-Man has your answer. It's kind of like that. Like, she saved, I'm thinking, a lot of lives uh, by not having a more evil, sinister Scarlet Witch. I think if she got her kids back, she'd be obsessing about Vision, um, who I just kind of imagine isn't even on Earth. Like, where the heck is Vision? It's been three years. We got the show called Vision Quest coming up. I'm just supposed to trust that this is coming. Uh, it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's being described as a trilogy of shows. WandaVision, Agatha All Along, and Vision Quest. <clears throat> a trilogy. Wow. That means to me that Agatha... I mean, uh, I'm sorry. That means to me that Scarlet Witch is going to be coming back. I... I no, she's coming back already. There's been a lot of talks about it. You see Elizabeth Olsen in the in some of the media um, saying how she'd love to come back. I'm pretty sure they probably sold her on her story. I think she's even getting a solo movie. And the cool part about that is I think it's after Secret Wars, which, you know, okay, it sucks. It's far away. But we need big things on the horizon like a Scarlet Wish movie. We like it'll be something to look forward to after the giant Avengers movie we had just watched, like probably putting you know chills down your spine. Um, but similar to Endgame, where it's the end of a saga, and who will usher in that new saga? Wanda Maximoff will it be a variant. I don't know. Will Billy play a part in all this? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Seems like they're setting up the young Avengers. That's been talked about for years since like ever as i can remember that they're setting up the young avengers um i'm excited to see how that culminates when that'll culminate there's so many great ideas going on at marvel right now um and then all of a sudden they get a pop-up surprise hit somebody at marvel watched this show and made the higher-ups realize this is going to be a big one and they took the gamble to put him out weekly again they didn't do that for uh echo they put her show They put her show like in one day. It was like kind of like a Netflix upload. They've been testing that with these Marvel shows. I think the weekly formula for the show really works. And and maybe that's why they did it because there's a lot of cliffhangers. And the show um, grabs you by the hand and takes you through it instead of you having to do a lot of mental brain work to understand what's going on. I don't imagine, I don't understand, and I don't see the perspective of somebody who hasn't seen WandaVision. Um, But... I do believe that this show has probably brought in a good few people who are just watching it and not MCU people. Um, And I think the show does a decent job up and it doesn't do a bad job when they reveal that he's Billy, but I think the job it does is it's going to make the viewer want to go back and figure out what happened in WandaVision and know who Wanda is, Um, or they're going to hate it. But I haven't heard that. I've only heard good things about the show. So see, like skipping back through time, through the like recent and previous episodes, and seeing Lilia's revelation happen before our very eyes from her perspective, um, going back to being a child, going to this place in time and that place in time, and piecing together the tarot card she needs to place down so the swords falling from the sky don't kill them. And this episode, the way it's just crafted together, I, I need to go back and watch it again. And I might, I'd say I might talk about it next week, but we maybe we'll, maybe we'll do an after after show for Agatha all along. Like I used to do. Maybe I'll get TJ and Dustin and we can t- talk about it as a group. If not, maybe I'll just do my own. Um, if it's worth it, if, if there's like a lot to process, um, like with this one right now, I feel like I'm at the end. I kind of covered everything Lilia style, um, out of order and just with no sense of, uh, story structure. It's just coming together for us. Um, I, I'm not being serious. I'm usually pretty happy with the episodes I put out. I want to make episodes that I would like to listen to. Sometimes I make shorter ones like last week's where it was a big episode, but I didn't want to like sit in it for too long. You know, it was an explanation episode. So we knew a lot of what was going on uh, vaguely and we got to see the background of how William became Billy. And um, that happened fast and uh, 
seeing the other witches cross his path, by the way, going off topic again, but we see Alice be a police officer, uh, being a police officer, showing up to the scene of his accident, right? when he's technically being born as Billy again. Um, And Lilia is the one who puts the sigil on him. I mean, it's like he didn't even bring these people together. He had Agatha do it. And I don't know like how that, how that came to be. It's just like fate. It's just a sense of fate. And in a world of superheroes and magic, fate rules out in the end, but fate could just be magic, you know, magic explained. Um, I think Lilia and Jen are the two very grounded characters along with Alice. They are uh, they were pretty very like it's like very grounded people um who have like you know everyone has the baggage of their past like Jen being bound. Um I'm wondering if we'll learn more about that in the next one. Something tells me it's not going to go great for Jen in the next episode, I'll be honest with you. We have like two episodes left so there's one more trial, right? It's going to be Jen again or it'll be it will be Billy's because he hasn't had one yet. We thought that today I thought tarot card one was him, but he, he was not doing well with that. They, and he, and he wishes Lilia was there. And at that exact moment, Lilia shows up to do it. Um, which I just love. And I just love the sacrifice from a character like this. Um, she feels her purpose and she actually wins and she beats the Salem. I mean, how that's a huge deal. That's a huge deal to me. The, the creepy, the creepy dark figures chasing them down the witch's road. That's in another dimension trying to kill them. Yeah. I'm scared of them. I'd be really happy to know that they were gone. Lily gets rid of all of them on the swords, but you know, it, it being a Marvel show and they're kind of like undead. It seems like, I mean, I wonder if they'll just like, five minutes later stand up walk uh, walk off the impaled sword and move on to chasing our crew our coven again okay for the final moments not moments like minutes of this episode i'm going to do something that i used to do um let me know if you like it in the feedback section i know i'm bringing it up a lot uh, i would like to see somebody in there this week not that we haven't had nobody uh, yeah nobody's post anything in there uh so let's look at reddit marvel uh, reddit.com slash r slash Marvel Studios is a place. I haven't been there in a while um, because I'm not on on Reddit as much these days, Uh, but it is, it has been my favorite place even before I started watching YouTube videos to see what the fan discussion is about and how everyone's rating uh, what's going on. So we'll go through some of the top comments on there for their Agatha all along thread that, uh, I mean, it's only three hours old. So these are some fresh opinions and immediately off the gate, we get a guy named Hitler's right nipple. Uh, and he mentions he really likes how Lilia's powers work. The flashing forward and backwards in time is pretty interesting. It's neat to see all her random comments suddenly make sense. Yeah, I, I was saying the same thing, Hitler's right nipple, and you know what? You hit it right on the tip of that nipple. Um, I'm sorry if there's any family-friendly listeners right now. Um, we're moving on. Kim underscore Ammons mentions, this episode made me forget that the show isn't called Lilia all along. That was such a powerful episode. Holy shit, this is how you do an ensemble show. Kim, thank you. Pra- I'm praising you right now. That's exactly, exactly what I'm saying. This is how you do it, man. This is a great show. It's freakily good. It's it's unfair how good the show is. I, <laughs> I don't even know what I mean by that. Um, Tobio Okuma says, I love you guys, and it's been very fun speculating at what the hell is going on. I pray Jack Schaefer gets to write a Scarlet Witch movie later. She's done an amazing job in both WandaVision and Agatha all along. She truly knows the character well and is great at adapting out of out of hard to understand comic aspects. Well said, Tobio. Well said. Uh, I, I say no more. I got the chills reading your comment. Mr. The Kid in quotes. We are not cool, teenager. Uh, dang. She's using his full name. <laughs> I actually laughed out loud at that part when Jen says that to him. Like, she's being stern and calls him teenager. That was funny. Sakura Tacos says, you want a straight answer? Ask a straight lady. Um, is, that, is that what she said? Is that what she said? Um, there's a gif. There's a gif joke here. I'm going to describe it to you. When the kid you babysat grows up and gives you shit. And it's like an old, like WandaVision Agatha giving us th- Agnes giving us a thumbs up to the audience. Um, little did we know. 
Um, Clueless Emoji writes, my God, this episode is one of the most beautiful in the series yet. I said it was beautiful too. I'm telling you, it was beautiful. <laughs> it's well written and ex- executed. Finally, a, li- a Lilia dub. I don't know if he means like finally a Lilia episode by that or win, but I mean, I stand by the prediction that I stated earlier, which you might have skipped a minute ahead and I'm not going to mention it again. Um, okay, let's just read a few more because I'm coming back to another Hitler's right nipple comment. Um, he. <laughs> he said the same thing as the last comment. Okay, that's good. We'll read one more. Um, Asuru comments, What an incredible episode in all caps. Every episode, every MCU project should have this level of quality. Dear fucking God. Oh, God, I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. Especially after Secret Invasion, man, that could have been a movie. I'm telling you. But we got to get some bad shows to get some good shows. And in time, I believe the the period of the MCU, uh, we will probably call it the Dark Age, will just be a thing of the past. Because we're getting right back on track right now. Don't you underestimate the power of what very good show can do and studios will act on that i believe we'll probably get vision quest sooner than later i hope it's a battle world story from secret wars i like the idea of there being a battle world for over a year in the mcu and having crossover moments in secret wars that you can't even come up with because they're so good um thank you for being here thank you for spending time um after you watch the episode come to me and you want you watch more you listen you want more and you come to me and that means the world you're I'm, you're giving me your precious time that's why i'm trying to keep it like closer to 30 minutes not like hour and a half long this is exactly what happened um it is a little more off the cuff this episode uh, i'm always trying new things i uh, just want to say thanks for listening and thanks for being here for the 50th time leave us your feedback we want to hear good things from you we want to talk marvel with you and i want to feature it on the show uh no pressure but come on through we're waiting for you fam um i'd like to thank like i almost started saying that i might be getting a little tired and um i don't know maybe my when i space out like i'm going somewhere into the future of the past helping someone out in my life leading to the obvious events of today good gosh we're gonna have to i'm gonna have to rewatch that one it was so good um we are everywhere streaming we are on youtube we're on wherever you're listening from give us a rating a thumbs up uh friendly comment whatever you can do it goes the longest way and i want my podcast to be known uh, i love what i'm doing i'd like to share it with more people terrible at advertising i'll uh, be ready for episode 100 we have a special guest who i'm not going to advertise but i'm just gonna it'll be a surprise it's not orlando bloom i don't know where he's been okay he should be in the mcu but it's not him it's no actor um it's someone i admire uh, there's a hint in this episode of who that person is and that's all i'll say and until this friday we will be covering werewolf by night with dustin until then i will see you guys next time thanks again for being here and avengers disassemble